Welcome. In this section, we're going to go into the descriptions of surface irregularity, which is a slightly more complex topic than we've covered in this course, and hopefully will give you an idea of what types of things you may encounter as you go through your optical design career. So surface irregularity is a type of surface accuracy description that describes how the shape of a surface deviates from the shape of the intended design. Surface irregularities correspond to the wavefront produced by an optical system. So any surface irregularity will produce a change in the wavefront and degrade the optical performance. So for example here, we have a plano convex lens, which takes a plane wavefront and changes it to a spherical wavefront. If this surface is exactly as designed and we measure the wavefront, we'll get a measurement like this with perfect circles. If there's surface irregularity in the system, we'll see a distorted wavefront where the wavefronts don't quite match the ideal case. Surface irregularity modeling can be as simple or complex as needed depending on the application. Some simplified surface irregularity models just look at spherical aberration and astigmatism or just astigmatism and fit whatever the actual performance is to these aberrations. This may be appropriate for a handheld optic like a magnifying glass where you're not too concerned on high performance. However, disregarding coma and trefoil and other high order effects is not recommended for lens assemblies or optically sensitive systems. Simplified surface irregularity models often do not sufficiently reproduce the wavefront error or irregularity in the system to the degree that is needed. One way to model these higher order irregularities is using Zernike polynomials. Zernike polynomials are a sequence of polynomials that describe the surface modes on a disk. So if we were to look at this, these are different resonant modes that could appear on a circular disk. And the number of these polynomials is infinite. And when you put them all together, they can fully describe any mode on this disk. We don't use all of the polynomials, generally just the first 39 or so, I believe are available in Optic Studio, but this is sufficient to accurately enough describe any surface irregularities we may encounter. The different terms represent different components of the wavefront error, and they correspond to different aberrations that are present in optical systems. So here we just have a few of them mapped out up to third order, like astigmatism, defocus, coma, and spherical aberrations. Here's an example from Optics Studio and how this may look. Uh, this is just showing how Zernike polynomials can account for aberrations in a optical system. If we look at the focusing of the rays on axis in a wavefront measurement taken in Optics Studio, we can correlate to this to a Zernike polynomial. And Additionally, Optics Studio, you can open a spreadsheet that gives you a description of the various Zernike polynomials that are contributing to the aberrations. So on axis of the field, we see that the Zernike polynomial that contributes the most is the spherical aberration. If we were to move off axis, higher up in the field, we see that the wavefront measurement changes, and this can be thought of as a description that's the sum of a couple Zernike polynomials. Indeed, if we look at the Zernike polynomials that are given by Optic Studio, you see this is a combination of spherical and vertical astigmatism with a little bit of coma thrown in there. Fitting real surface irregularity maps to Zernike coefficients is a modeling method with much higher accuracy and most design softwares include this tolerancing functionality. So in this graphic, we have four surface irregularity maps, and the fitting of these maps to Zernike coefficients. With this, we can see what types of aberrations are being produced in the system due to the surface irregularities. So to summarize, Zernike 
polynomials are more accurate ways to model wavefront irregularities, though you should note that they do require surface measurements of lenses to correlate to physical optical systems, which can add additional time, effort, and expense. We should also note that there are multiple different Zernike schemes, so multiple ways to produce these polynomials. They all work, but they will vary the expressions and coefficients, so you should know which Zernike scheme you're using. Optic Studio uses both the standard or null Zernike scheme, as well as fringe Zernike schemes, which are two common ways to generate Zernike polynomials in lens design. Hopefully this has piqued your interest a little bit on some of the more advanced topics that are out there, and we hope that you continue to explore as you move through your optical design career. Thank you for watching.